Okay, started the timer and here is your question. Well, if you have read and understood, can you begin your session? Hello, good morning. I am one of the surgical in charge here, working professor. My am who is my consultant. Uh, I <clears throat> have seen that you are about to go a procedure today. So may I please know how much do you know about it? Uh, hi, doctor. I don't know much about it. I was told that I will have some camera test to check for my food pipe. Okay, <clears throat> not to worry about it. I will give you the full details regarding it and give the entire explanation uh, procedure. So, OGD is the acronym which stands for esophagogastroduodenoscopy, wherein it's a procedure, invasive procedure, wherein the uh, tube which has a camera attached to it is inserted through your mouth and it's passed down your food pipe into the stomach and beyond that into the small intestine. So throughout this procedure, you will be either you a local anesthesia or a sedation so that uh, you don't have pain during the procedure. Uh, the advantage of doing this is we will be uh, widening the narrowing, which we have seen on the barium swallow uh, investigation done earlier, and as well as try to picture uh, visualize all the images which the camera will read to the screen. We will also biopsy of such areas inside of your intestines so that uh, we can test them. So does that sound all right? Is it necessary to do it, doctor? Uh, well, of course, uh, it is the next step towards our uh, investigation process because as you have already undergone the barium swallow scan, so it shows some narrowing in the lower of your foot pipe. The next step to do this is to as so, so you have developed a narrowing and we can even do a procedure to uh, widen the narrowing. So do you think this is cancer? Well, I definitely understand your apprehension towards this uh, query of yours and, uh, and you would be scared. nothing to worry about it. Still, uh, since in the primitive requires some more investigation. As I said, further investigate uh, why this has happened. We are doing this OGD procedures and this advan added advantage is that we can even take biopsy, as I said. So we can test it and probably within two weeks of time frame, we can notify you the results and tell what exactly is happening. Okay, doctor. So while you will be doing this procedure, sick or sleeping? Uh, that is normal for anybody to have because uh, since we don't want you to have pain and we want the process to be smooth is our priority, uh, good health is our priority, we will uh, perform this procedure either if you can opt for local anesthesia wherein a chemical is sprayed uh, in your mouth and the posterior aspect of your back of your mouth so that it becomes numb. The you can drive in this uh, pro, if you are this, only uh, precaution you need to take is for 30 to 60 minutes following the procedure, avoid any hot or uh, hot drinks because it may cause burns. And the other option is you can undergo sedation where a injectable drug is given inside your veins and you will be asleep and you may not remember anything. But uh, following this procedure, you will accompany you in the hospital and not be allowed to drive a car for the next 24 hours so that you recover smoothly. Is there any other test available? Is there any other alternative which I can go for? 
Uh, well, you already have undergone the barium uh, swallow scan, but uh, and uh, uh, I'm afraid that we cannot perform any uh, dilatation uh, early, nor can we take some tissue samples from uh, why this has happened. So I suggest that in the best interest, the uh, OGD procedure would be the best alternative for you. All right, doctor. Thank you so much for explaining me. Is there anything else you want me to do? Uh, no, nothing else. So yes, I will just see your uh, the procedure which will be undergoing, which is the OGD procedure. Uh, I will be performing and. And we will be probably visualizing the uh, suspicious areas and taking biopsy and try to uh, widen the narrowing in the lumen of your uh, foot pipe and uh, further investigate and inform you in the two week advisory procedure. And uh, in, if you have any other questions and queries apart from what we have already discussed, I'm ready to listen. So can I take my breakfast before coming? Uh, well, if you, the procedure is scheduled in the morning, uh, you may uh, have to uh, skip the meals. But if it is in the afternoon, uh, you will have to, you can take light breakfast, but not beyond 8 a.m. And uh, sips of water can be before the procedure. Did you discuss the risks with this procedure? Uh, there are a few, if I if you, uh, I will list that. Uh, there might be uh, injury or there might be tears and bleeding may occur inside of your foot pipe. Uh, it might even cause perforation and uh, in the and this occurs maybe one in and uh, uh, any procedure. This under uh, very good precautions and. We, there are experienced surgeons who will be performing this procedure. So you need not worry about it. And uh, telling for you to get afraid of, it's a pre procedure that these things necessarily can happen. All right, doctor. Thank you so much. Okay. So further steps will be taken and you will be informed subsequently. Have a nice day. I shake hands and big smile. And wash yes. hands. Uh, at the end, yes, you summarize. And then, uh, yeah, still have one minute left. That's why. What more could have been covered? Did you tell about avoiding the hot drinks? So can I just add a few things? Yes. So you didn't ask my name. You didn't confirm my identity thing. Okay. And uh, the second thing. Why no, but, he, uh, he will ask he why I keep salivating? One question. And if smoking or drinking has caused caused this, caused him to have uh, this condition. Uh, because... This is also these are the also two questions that could have been asked. And if biopsy shows that it's carcinoma, how would you manage it? Okay. Yeah, these three questions. And then, okay, identity. Or maybe patient was already in because uh, patient was scheduled for OTP or, or will be scheduling. So yeah, you can maybe confirm. Uh, yes, confirming identity was important, yes, yes. Okay. Because you were going to uh, first take consent and then put in uh, for the list, so yes. And... Uh, uh yeah, no bell goes. One in one in thousand. Uh, it's better to say it's the gaming. Okay. Because the number is taken as a reference point, which patient can bring further that what was the reference of this one in one thousand. So saying it's it's very rare serves okay. the purpose. And in the beginning, when you explaining me the procedure, uh, it was like. A, a monologue to two minute continuous. So uh, it's better to uh, keep asking patient that are you with me? Are you following me? Does it make sense? Like you say three sentences, check the standing, then three, two, three sentences. If you continuously okay. speak like that, doesn't show the communication. Yeah, okay.
started the timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read him and this book, kindly considering it surgical pathology patient, tell me what is the pathogenesis of this condition that this patient has? Uh, because this is a case of uh, diabetes. Yes. And <coughs> due to the diabetes is a condition with immunosuppression, so he has got the infection and perianal abscess. Yes. How abscess is formed? Uh, abscess is, uh, 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 it is a collection of pus uh, surrounded by granulocent tissue or fibrous tissue. Yes. It is uh, uh, formed either by seeding of pyogenic organism into the normal tissue or due to the secondary infection of necrotic tissue. Okay, how abscess can be confirmed? Uh, abscess uh, can be confirmed. Yes, please. Uh, even uh, it's uh, uh, there will be a necrotic region in the center. Then it is uh, will be surrounded by neutrophils, and then there will be outer layer of uh, yes. But how would you confirm it? How would you confirm your diagnosis? How would you we, sure? we do with the by doing the clinical examination and ultrasound. Okay, good. Which will show the cystic. What would you? What are the features that you'll find on clinical examination? Uh, it will be there will be cystic lesion with yes. uh, uh, there will be fluctuation and transillumination and yes, there may be if it is sebaceous, uh, uh, then there will be punctum also. And, okay. Uh, can you name few organisms system. that can cause abscess formation? Like uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes. How would you classify and, that? Maybe bacterial, non-bacterial? Yeah, they are like or... uh, bacterial and uh, non-bacterial are like Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes. Non-bacterial are like uh, uh, fungal, yes. uh, viral and yes. paras parasitic. Parasitic, very good. Okay, can you name one test that can, that can detect the cause of abscess? Uh, it is a gram staining, Very good. which can give the, yes. Why a patient or, or uh, in case of abscess uh, has fever? Uh, and due to the pyrogens like interleukin-1, and uh, tumor Tum necrosis factor. Very good. Yes. Uh, yeah. These are uh, these are produced during the uh, abscess, and they cause uh, prostaglandin synthesis, which uh, is uh, which occurs in the hypothalamus, that is uh, peri uh, perivascular cells, and then hypothalamus causes fever. If you in will not manage abscess, what can happen? Uh, the it either uh, uh, either it resolute by itself it uh, will change into the uh, means resolute by uh, the making fibrosis or it will burst out side and make a sinus and drain so, out how would be the surrounding tissue look like uh, surrounding tissue will... yes yes Surrounding tissue will be red and inflamed. 
how would you differentiate abscess from cellulitis? Uh, abscess, Can you yes. give me five uh, yes, <laughs> first, differentiating points? Uh, first, uh, the causatic organism, uh, yes. abscess is caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Yes. And the cellulitis is caused by uh, streptococci. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, abscess is localized inflammation and localized swelling, while cellulitis, it is a diffused over the plane and then in abscess there will be central zone of necrosis but okay. cellulitis will have extensively necrosed and then the pus character yes. that uh, uh, abscess will be thick and uh, in cellulitis it Can will be thin. Can you define the term cellulitis? What do you mean by that? What do you understand by the cellulitis? Uh, it is the uh, it is the infection of the skin, which usually uh, involves the dermis and uh, subcutaneous tissue. And uh, it is a spreading and also there will be pain, swelling, uh, redness and raised temperature. Okay, and it's a bacterial infection. Okay, yeah, can you please tell me in case of abscess, when would you decide when to give antibiotic? Uh, if uh, we do not drain the abscess, then we put the patient on antibiotic. And if this, uh, yes, it is if... a not, uh, it is a type of cellulitis. Then, uh, like uh, we give the antibiotic. So when uh, abscess is but... not localized, then you give. Okay. Yeah. What do you understand by the term uh, giant cells? It is the uh, fusion of uh, active. Uh, multiple activated macrophages and which forms the multi-nucleated giant cells. These are usually found in the granuloma. Okay. Can you tell me what you understand by the term granuloma? Granuloma is a, a condition in which it is a consist of, it is an inflammatory condition where there will be uh, uh, activated macrophages, multinucleated giant cells surrounded by lymphocyte and uh, fibrous tissue. Can you uh, classify types of granulomas? Types of granuloma. Uh, I'll pass. This. Can you name few conditions in which granuloma can be seen? Yeah, like tuberculosis, yes. leprosy, uh, sarcoidosis even in Crohn's disease. What type of granuloma yes. can you see in tuberculosis? Uh, yeah, that is the caseous granuloma. Yes. Uh, how do you differentiate uh, uh, this granuloma of tuberculosis from uh, Crohn's disease granuloma? Uh, in tuberculosis granuloma, there will be central necrosis, caseous necrosis, while in Crohn's disease, it will be, there will not be any caseous necrosis centrally. What stain can you use to confirm your diagnosis for tuberculosis stain. granuloma? Uh, for tuberculosis, we'll use gel ninsen as staining. Okay, what are the causes of uh, formation of granuloma in tuberculosis? Uh, you mean uh, the bacteria? It is a mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mainly, okay. there are certain other bacteria like Mycobacterium intracellulary, Mycobacterium avium complex. They all can cause tuberculosis. This patient is diabetic of the Belgian. I will know I was going to ask you about diabetes, but then if you are interested, we can still go ahead. But then yeah, then yes, ma'am, we can. This, since this patient is diabetic and is on uh, oral medications, uh, what management would you suggest for this patient for this condition, for analysis? Uh, first of all, I'll ask for control of the diabetes. Yes. And uh, uh, there will be already, as abscess is already drained, yes. and uh, uh, there will be proper wound care and uh, let the uh, abscess uh, after drainage heal by secondary intention.
Yes. How frequent would you ask the patient to come and change the dressings and everything like that? Uh, if you can uh, tell me how I, if it was I your patient and you Every alternate day, I think. Okay. Would you ask, would you advise antibiotic? This if uh, the, uh, there is a continuous open drainage, then no need to advise antibiotic. This one, uh, because it should heal with uh, secondary. Diabetes, uh, I am not sure, ma'am, actually. Maybe because of diabetes, you should advise the antibiotic. Yes. Maybe one or two doses, one dose. Depends because here we don't normally give uh, antibiotics until unless there is infection. And this is like healing with secondary intention if it's not healing and there is uncontrolled diabetes. And maybe, yes. Yes, depending upon culture. And, yeah. Okay, we started the timer and here is the question. Yeah, right. so if you have read and understood, yes. kindly tell me how the shoulder joint is formed. The shoulder joint is formed by the head of the humerus yes. and the and the uh, we call uh, glenoid glenoid of the scapula together with acromioclavicular joint and sternoclavicular joint. What type of joint is shoulder joint? It is a type of ball and socket joint. Type of synovial joint, okay. There is, yes. What type of cartilage is present in the shoulder joint? Can you recall the cartilage? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Can you recall the cartilage? Yeah. Can. Can you please tell me uh, what is this two? Uh, which one, ma'am? Two. These are the. This is the two. Yes. This is the acromion process. Okay. Can you please tell me fifteen here? Okay, that is supraspinous fossa. Yes, what muscle is inserted here? Uh, here, supraspinatus muscles. What is the nerve supply of this muscle? Uh, it is a supraescapular nerve. Okay, wh what is here, five? No, uh, it is uh, infraspinous fossa. Okay, can you please tell me what is 11? Uh, where is 11? Yeah, 11 yes. is the costal surface of the uh, scapula yes. and uh, here uh, uh, lies the subscapularis. We can also call it subscapular fossa. Okay, can you please tell me the surface marking of coracoid process? It lies uh, two centimeter below and uh, uh, lateral to uh, what we call the a lateral third of the clavicle, I think the junction okay. of middle yes. middle third and lateral third of the clavicle. Yes, that, that is correct. Yes, and one centimeter below. Okay, can you please tell me what you understand by the term rotator cuff? Rotator cuff is a group of muscles 
which helps in uh, stabilization and different movement at the shoulder joint. It consists of uh, uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis. Okay, right. Can you please tell me what are the what are the muscles responsible for the abduction of the shoulder joint? Uh, uh, from zero to 30 degree or 15 to 30 degree, 0 to 15 or 30 yes, degree, it is uh, yes. uh, supraspinatus causes abduction and yes. up to 90 degree it is deltoid yes. and beyond 90 degree it is the uh, movement at the uh, <coughs> movement at the scapulothoracic region which is caused by trapezius and uh, levator scapulae and rhomboids. Okay, can you name few uh, decreasing, uh, can you name few factors which decreases the stability of the shoulder joint? Fracture, factors, uh, yeah. Factors, factors. Yes. sorry, yes. few factors. Factors, yes ma'am, factors first is the bony factors that is the shallowness of the glenoid cavity. And uh, second is the, inferior uh, uh, glenohumeral ligament which is uh, lax, lax than comparatively to the other area these are the factors which uh, and cause the inferior decrease. aspect yeah on the like inferior aspect no, yes yeah. Yeah. why because of the presence of what inferiorly what is there uh inferiorly there is a quadrangular space so can you please tell me the boundaries of that quadrangular space, which is present in yeah. the shoulder joint? Um, quadrangular space is bounded uh, superiorly by the uh, uh, infraspinatus muscle. No. Inf uh, no, no, sorry. Superiorly by the teres minor muscles. Yes. Inferiorly by the teres major. And... Uh, uh, medially by the long head of triceps yes. and laterally by the uh, shaft of humerus. Yes, the neck, surgical neck of the humerus. What are the contents yeah. of quadrangular space? Can you please tell? Uh, quadrangular space contains the uh, axillary nerve and uh, posterior circumflex artery. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me what are you looking at now? Oh uh, Yeah, this is the... Uh, 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 arthrography of uh, shoulder joint, MR arthrography. Yes, yes. Which view, please? Uh, it is the, uh, it is called the sagittal view. Okay. Can you identify, it says coronal oblique view. Can you identify yes, number one? Yeah, number one is the uh, uh, coracoid process. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. acromion, acromion process. Yes. Sorry, sorry, acromion okay. process. Two, please. Two is the, uh, it is soft tissue. Uh, oh, soft tissue. I, maybe inferior capsule or soft tissue. Axillary nerve and circumference. Yeah, maybe, yes. Okay, three, okay. please. Three is the, uh, that is the uh, uh, inferior uh, part of the capsule. Yes, recess of the shoulder joint. Okay, four, please. Four, uh, four. Four is the clavicle. Okay, and then five, please. Five is the deltoid. Okay, what is the nerve supply of the deltoid muscle? It is supplied by axillary nerve. What is eight? Eight is the head of humerus, or uh, yeah, head okay. of humerus. Uh, what is six? Arrow pointing at it. Uh, six is the glenoid seven. labrum. Okay, and then seven. Seven uh, is labrum. Six is. Uh, seven, six is three. glenoid. Six is bone, and seven is the cartilage. Labrum. Okay, what is nine, please? Nine is a supraspinatus muscle. Okay, ten, please. Ten is supraspinatus tendon. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what are the reflexes in the upper limb? Uh, there are biceps reflexes, triceps reflexes, and supinator reflexes. What are their root values? Uh, biceps, root values? biceps is C5, C6. Uh, uh, supinator is also C5, 6. And triceps is C6, 7. Am I, if am I right? Supinator is only 6. 
Okay. 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 And then okay. Uh, triceps is C7 only. Just the biceps is C5, 6. Okay. And then okay. you didn't tell me how to check them, how to confirm them. Where are they located uh, and what would you do? How would you make sure? Uh, you mean um, procedure, how to do yeah, the yeah, procedure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To check the biceps uh, reflexes, I will keep the uh, subject's uh, forearm, forearm over my own forearm, support it, and then I put a, a thumb over the biceps tendon at the elbow joint, and then I hammer uh, softly over that. It will show the contraction of the biceps muscle. Okay, good. It will show the positive uh, means uh, reflex. It can be executed or normal. That's depend or absent. Okay. For uh, tri uh, triceps, similarly, I'll uh, do directly over the triceps tendon. I'll hammer over the tap over the triceps tendon, and uh, by supporting the forearm, it will show the contraction of the triceps muscle. Then it will be the triceps reflex, and for supinator reflex. We do the tapping over the uh, radial uh, estaloid, just above the radial estaloid at the brachioradialis tendon. It will the, uh, cause the uh, hand to go into supination, and uh, that will be the uh, supinator reflex. Okay, please, one last question. Can you name few structures which are attached to the coracoid process? Coracoid process, yes. Uh, uh, muscles, uh, if I'll tell you muscles, it is the short head of biceps and coracobrachialis and the pectoralis minor. And uh, then there are uh, ligaments like yes. coracoclavicular ligament, yes. coracoacromial ligament, and also coracohumeral ligament. Very good. Very good. Yes. Okay. Bell is gone, you know, but then they can ask you about the origin and insertion of pectoralis major muscle for previous or the serratus. Yes, yes, ma'am. So many so things. Origin so many insertion, things. there are enough supplies and actions yes, that you can revise. Uh, this was actually since the shoulder joint. So, yes, yes I've only asked you how the shoulder joint is. Okay, maybe, uh, yeah. I've only asked you how, about the shoulder plan because that was the only thing. Yes, there are so many things over here. Yes, I think upper limb, which can be asked. Yes. Brachial plexus, then. Yes, definitely. But then here, okay, they are not in direct contact with the shoulder joint. Yeah. So that's yes, why I've only asked you about the shoulder plan. Yeah. Hello, no, okay, so I want to add yeah. something. If, yeah, if please. allow me. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Do you remember, brother, just we have discussed together about the stability of the shoulder joint, about some dynamic and static st yes. stability yes. provider? Yes. yes. So yes. I can remember that you have you have uh, remembered that uh, a special point, that, like negative interdipolar pressure. Yeah, that I forgot. But it. Yeah. Negative intraarticular pressure causes stability of the joint. Ma'am asked yes. what what causes instability. Yes, that's why. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. like you, yeah. I'm just discussing right. this thing. No, no, about the right. stability of the shoulder joint. We have discussed yes, yes. that, ma'am. There is some the static cuff. Yes. Yeah, there is yeah. some static and there is some dynamic. Dynamic, dynamic. means, ma'am, which which can just mobilize and also can give support. So the dynamic stability is only provided by the rotator cuff muscle. Yes. And the static stability, the major point is like negative interarticular pressure, the articular capsule, articular conformity, glenoidal cap, glenoid cavity, and glenoidal labrum. So these things and we have decided earlier. That's why I am. I have humoral just ligaments. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like yes. Many humoral right. ligaments. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You are right, doctor. Yeah. That's it. I have just asked the uh, opposite questions. So I. And <laughs> another another question uh, from the picture, like ma'am asked, ma'am, can you please show the picture yes, again? Yes. Yes, please. Which one? Uh, Ma'am, uh, that arthrogram, yeah. yeah. Yes. So uh, number two, actually, we all know, brother, like we know that there is some uh, space, uh, that uh, upper quadrangular space, the content of this space is that uh, which goes behind the surgical neck. 
So that is the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Yeah, so number actually, two is that actually. <laughs> you already know I, that. <laughs> I <laughs> have to actually. Yeah. I have to remember that that what happened uh, actually is yeah. there. Yes, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Like two is very like sometimes we get confused. Okay, what is two here? Why it is pointed yeah, yeah. here? So it's just that two structures over there. That's it. Yes. He even told me he knew, but it's a, it's not. It's just there are two spaces. Upper one is quadrangular and the lower one is triangular. Triangular. Upper quadrangular. Yes. Yes, he and knew, about uh, the lower triangular one, we all know that, uh, that in the spiral group there is two content, and also the content yeah. of this is same: the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 Right. Good. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. You Thanks did great. Uh, uh, like you are an orthopedic one, so <laughs> I. <should laughs>